the one stock I'm looking at is SFTW, which is currently a SPAC. But I know many people don't really want to get into SPACs right now. But if you take a look at Astra, which is a space company, um, the orange chart is Astra. And you can see it sat dead for a little while. And then it, it recently just merged with their SPAC, HOL. And then it went up like, I think, 50%. SFTW, which is merging with Black Sky. And Black Sky is also a space company. And it's working on like these small satellites that are small, but they're more efficient and easier to use than traditional satellites. They work with the government and they work with many top cap commercial businesses. And they actually have revenue unlike many of these other space companies out there. If you take a look at the chart, this the candlestick pattern is SFTW and it's been sitting dead for a long time. It's merging this month. So I think it could have like the same potential type of run up leading up to the merger vote date and the merger this month. So that's one stock I'm looking at. And the other thing is that it's $10 right now, and there's virtually no risk involved because it's a SPAC and it cannot go below 10 So I think it's a pretty good stock at the moment to look forward to. Is this a competitor for Astra? No, I mean, Astra is mainly working on like rockets. This thing's working on like satellites, but it's still part of like the space industry. So is this like a swing trade for you or are you? Yeah, swing trade. It's a swing. But I think it's also a great long term. I think there's a high potential for space stocks, but do you think that it's going to take a long time? to get some return on your investment and maybe the money might be stuck there. Is that why you're swing trading or? Yeah, exactly. I think it's going to be like 10 years until many of these stocks get some exponential growth coming in. Mm -hmm. But I, I really like the space industry as well. So I think this is just a type of stock. It was pretty hyped up before. And I think it could have the same potential run up that Astra had. For now, I'm interested in uh, Apple. They've been trading super high uh, these past two weeks, and I expect them to, to dip soon. Uh, I believe they haven't had a down day in over nine trading days, and something like that does really happen often. And then, after it dips, depending on the severity of uh, the dip, uh, I'm hoping to, to buy in for a uh, little swing trade as the new iPhone and Apple Watch are probably uh, about to be announced. Uh, usually uh, this happens in and around uh, September and maybe even some other uh, new Apple products uh, might get announced too. But I want to ride the momentum that's going to be brought in uh, by those announcements. And also overall, Apple is just a great company. And you said this is a, a swing trade for you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because um, now they're trading pretty high uh, and I see the price uh, dipping. Apple tends to react a bit heavily. So um, if it dips pretty hard, I want to, uh, I'm going to buy in and then uh, uh, wait for the uh, momentum of the announcements to uh, come with the iPhone and the Apple Watch, you know, and then afterwards sell. My stock that I'm looking into is Facebook. This is not a swing trade. I have no intention on selling any of my shares. Um, it's a long-term play for me. Facebook, I think they're in the forefront of a number of mega trends that are arising. First of all, I think they are a major player or the leader in the personalized advertisement trend. This personalized advertisement trend is where companies are now going to social media and influencers targeting their audience specifically rather than just putting an ad on TV, which makes sense for these companies exposing their product to a specific audience than just a broad general population. And if you look at Facebook, they own several amazing platforms, as you all know. So they have Facebook, they have Facebook Messenger, they have Instagram, they have WhatsApp. And if you look at the numbers, at least 2 billion people are looking in at at least one of these platforms every day. Each day, we're talking about 2 billion people. And I think this would be a great place for personalized advertisement for a lot of companies. In 2020, November, Instagram even redesigned its home screen, adding reels and shop tabs, taking e-commerce seriously. If you look at Oculus, which is the VR company that Facebook acquired, Facebook has actually tried to enter into VR advertising, which I think is also going to be a huge thing in the future. Now, the second trend that Facebook is in is the VR AR. Again, they have put a lot of effort into VR, acquiring Oculus, and then they have built the virtual reality community called 
horizon. And this is where you can explore virtual reality. You can have fun playing games and challenges with your friends in the VR space. And you can even create and design these 3D objects in the virtual reality space. Um, and it's, it's really cool. And I also have no doubt that virtual reality and augmented reality will be a mega trend in the upcoming years and that Facebook will be one of the major um, leaders. And then finally, they are also in cryptocurrency and blockchain. So as you know, Facebook has been working on the stable coin called Libra in 2019, um, which is now renamed to DM Coins. So I have a strong belief that Facebook will also become one of the major players in the cryptocurrency space or the blockchain, as long as you have Mark as a leader in Facebook. This company is still growing beast, in my opinion, with only 12 billion debt, but if you look at the cash that they have, it's 65 billion and they have an amazing balance sheet. To me, this means that there's no need to even worry if there was a major crash that's coming. You know, with all this money, they could actually acquire a ton of great companies when the crash hits. So it's making Facebook a greater company with a stronger moat. You know, that's my personal opinion. So, and as a disclaimer, I do have a fair amount of Facebook shares. So it's one of my top five positions uh, that I started buying at 2019 and during the pandemic, but I would definitely like to add more if there is a major correction at this prices right now, I think it's kind of too high for me. But again, if there is a correction, I'm adding more and I have 0% of selling any of my Facebook shares, even if it crashes to like, I don't know, like 50%, 60%, I would happily add more shares of Facebook. And the only reason I would maybe sell my shares is if, you know, Mark left the company. No, oh, that's loyalty. <laughs> no, I really love, I really like Facebook. Um, I should have bought more during the pandemic. So I'm going to go with an older, more established company, Smith & Wesson Brands Inc. Currently trading at $28.89, $39.61 just recently after they came out with an outstanding earnings report. The company was formerly known as American Outdoor Brands Corporation. It changed its name to Smith & Wesson Brands in August of 2020. Smith & Wesson has been around since 1852 and is based out of Springfield, Massachusetts. Smith & Wesson designs, manufactures, and sells firearms worldwide. Company offers handguns, uh, revolvers, pistols, long guns, modern sporting rifles, bolt action rifles, muzzle loaders, on and on. They sell its products uh, through firearms enthusiasts, collectors, hunters, sportsmen, competitive shooters, individuals desiring home and personal protection, law enforcement, security agencies, and the military. It markets its products through independent dealers, retailers, in-store retails, and direct to consumers. The things that I really like about the company is it's established, and especially it's its earnings. Its earnings are really growing. In Q2 of 2020, uh, the earnings were 93 cents a share okay and that beat estimates by 30 cents in q3 of 2020 it was a dollar 12 a share beat estimates by 35 cents in q4 of 2020 a dollar 71 per share beat by 69 cents so quarter after quarter they're, they're beating and beating so the trailing 12 months estimates eps was four dollars and 40 cents and the industry average is two dollars and 49 cents eps gross uh, last quarter versus the same quarter of the prior year was up 347 for the full fiscal year, fiscal 2021 financial highlight, net sales were 1.1 billion compared to 529.6 million for the prior year, increase of 100%. The gross margin is 42.4% compared to 31% for the prior year. And the full year gap net income was 243.6 million, 440 per diluted share, compared with the gap net income of 27. 7 million. So they went from 27.7 million to 243.6 million in a year. Current PE is 6.57 compared to 37.71 in the industry average. Gross profit margin, 43.38%. Net income margin, 23.8%. Turn on equity, 74.5%. And it only has 48 million outstanding shares. Recently, at the end of the last earnings, the board authorized not only a share buyback, but a share buyback of $50 million. And they raised the quarterly dividend by 60% to $0.08 cents a share. So they're buying back their shares, which increases the value of my shares as a shareholder. They're giving me more money as a dividend, so they're passing on the money that they're making uh, in their operations. And the price has gone up. Last year, uh, they repurchased 10% of their outstanding shares, so that helps us out also. When you look at analyst upgrades, Lake Street adjusted their upgrade to $43 in June. ISS EVA have a buy rating. Thompson has a buy rating. McLean Capital Research a buy rating. And Zacks has a strong buy rating on the stock. Recently, I said that stock went up $39, and then 
in July, about July 2nd, a report came out that uh, shares fell sharply uh, after the National Instant Criminal Background Check System showed a 41% fall in June, the third year-on-year -year drop in the past four months. So what that means is that it's a drop in the number of background checks for people buying firearms. But they went on to say, well, the analyst said the decline was expected following last year's jump in demand, with June 2020 up 136 year-on-year. Despite the year-on-year -year decline, on an absolute basis, June 2021 was the second most background checks conducted in the month of June on record, showing that demand for firearms has not slowed, uh, they said, Wedbush rated Smith & Wesson brands uh, as a neutral. So I think at this point, possibility, I, I, I see that the decline in the share price to 28.89 uh, would lead into an opportunity to buy in and, and get your shares at a cheaper rate just because of this news. I own the stocks. I've owned them for a long time. They have everything that I like as far as earnings and profitability and gross revenue. Uh, and so that's why I own it.